Salute to everybody that's checking in. This is Darius Dior, Sting King the Media, where we have real conversations with real people and we share real music here. And today we got a very special guest. I like to let my guests introduce themselves, but for people that, have, that don't know you, have never seen you before, can you tell our audience who you are? All right. Well, thank you, Derek. I appreciate you inviting me to speak on your platform. Um, I believe what you're doing is important. Our communities need it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm Sherry Roundtree. I'm a 20-year Army veteran, retired five years ago, and started my financial literacy journey three years ago. Yeah. So um, sharpening my sword to, so I can educate our communities on, the, um, on money, yeah. how money works, um, because we need to know how to survive. You know, yeah. Um, while we're living, so yeah, a big part of why life I, can be long. Yeah, right. Life <laughs> can be long. A big, a big part of why the world is, is the way it is right now. Um, and you just hear a lot of conversations about what's happening with money, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, you know, I, I met you doing a project, and usually, you know, um, most people kind of turn me off. You know what I mean? But you didn't. You, you know, you, you felt real genuine about what you were doing. But can you tell us just? Um, I usually when I ask people how they're who who they are. I'm really um, asking them how they're doing, how you be, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, you, you, your health good right now, your mental health well right now, you know, how, how, how you be, you, you, you know, you be chilling, laid back, you be hanging out with the family, you be getting to the money. How are you? All of the above, <laughs> all, of the, all of the above. Um, I like to say that I'm under construction. Yeah. Um, always trying to evolve. Um, I actually stopped watching TV Two years ago, yeah. so I do. I watch more of, you know, YouTube content, more entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, I don't watch the news as much. Um, started tuning in a little bit more because it is um, election season, mm -hmm. election year. For sure. Um, and you just, yeah, that's a whole nother subject. Um, but as far as my overall well-being, like I said, I'm a, under construction. Um, I'm very family orientated. Yeah. Um, you see, I have my nephew here. I see you got your family yep. here, man. My nephew's son. Salute um, to the family. He is my legal. My, he is legally my uh, legally my son. You do legally your son. Yep. Um, got you. So family first. I do take care of my mother. Mother's almost seven years old, so um, take care of her. I have uh, my father is a homeless veteran in Sacramento, so I do a lot of um, nonprofit things with veterans because I am a veteran, and I do have PTSD documented. So. Yeah. Um, that's how we also met with Lori Strange mm -hmm. at the John C. Maxwell event. Um, I shout out to Lori Strange. Yeah, shout Lori, out to Lori. if you see this, shout out to you. Yes. I appreciate you for making this connection for me. Yes. Um, she's yeah. helping um, unsheltered women veterans. We like to say unsheltered versus homeless. Yeah. Um, but I just try to try to stay tapped in our communities because we need a voice. We need a voice. We do. Um, I got into finances early in my military career. By okay. default, I had a high phone bill and... I was a broke sergeant, so mm. I had to go get financial help. So um, I've had like retirement accounts since age 21, 22. Um, but I didn't have enough discipline, I would say. Um, I could probably be a multimillionaire by now if I had more discipline, especially in the, in the military. And that's another part of my, um, my target audience is young soldiers, because then we wouldn't have our homeless you know, community, our homeless yeah. community up so, because... Up so much. So, so yeah. that's important. It all ties together. Yeah. So just talk about what you do in financial literacy and why the work that you do is so important to you. I know you just explained that, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty efficiently. But like, um, if we, if, if that was, was the surface thing underneath that for you personally, um, I know you said that you're, you have a um, a family member in Sacramento, mm -hmm. um, which is which is a very touching. So if you could just talk about that, like why is what you do so important? You know, and, and, and why what is it that you do, and why is it so so important to you? Okay, so if you look at how people deal with finances, a lot of it can be linked to childhood trauma. Yeah. Now I don't have a clinical degree in that. I just have firsthand experience in that because, like I said, I did have a, my dad military veteran, 17 years Navy. Um, unfortunately, he got kicked out for drugs. Okay. So my dad was a big crackhead, 15 plus years. In the I'm from Long Beach, yeah. So he got kicked out for drugs. So we went from having a, you know, a very stable, stable life to being homeless. So my mom had to actually take two or three jobs. Just like that. Just like that. He got kicked out of the um, Navy on my ninth birthday. 15 years in there. He was in for 17 years. And got kicked out on my ninth birthday. So he was, he was on drugs 
15, 16 years before he actually got treatment. So, so he was in the military on drugs mm -hmm. across decades. Mm -hmm. Functioning. Back then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you mind me asking what drugs he was on? Cocaine. Cocaine. So then it went to crack, though. Right. So, so this is, like I said, we back in Long Beach in the 80s, 80s. 88, yeah. 89, it was crack season. So it was easy to get to. Um, and still show up to go to work and go to PT and, and do your job and have and money to get just, you fixed. Yeah, he just, like I said, popped hot and okay. then we were homeless. So that that's, it happened that fast. Right. And, so, and, this is, and, <laughs> and that's a terrible drug to witness anybody right. on. It is. And, and this is why you got into financial literacy and this is also the why behind mm -hmm. what it is that you do. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about just investment opportunities? Because the world is telling us on the internet that there's going to be a huge financial crash. You know, they've been saying this since 2008 when I was graduating from college. They've been mm -hmm. telling like, all the dollar is going to lose value, blah, blah, blah. What is your take on, you know, what, what options do we have here? What are we really facing? You know, get, tell me, like, what financial literacy really is and, you know, and, and what solutions do we really have? I would say it, it starts at home. A lot of our habits we get from looking at our parents, yeah. how their relation is with money. And like I said, I really didn't have a good foundation with that. Dad was horrible with money, and then you add a drug problem to that. Yeah. Right. Mom was good with money because she had limited resources, but she learned she could stretch a dollar. So I definitely get that from my mom. I can I can stretch a dollar. Yeah. OK. However, we don't want to live where we have to stretch. You want to be recession proof. So yeah. how do we become recession proof? How do we do that? You got to got to be disciplined. You got to get out of debt. Yeah. Stop trying to look like money and actually save some money, invest right. some money. You know, so we're more consumers. Spend less than you make. Correct. Because the person that's Step making, yeah, the person that's making 60k, some people are actually more financially well off than the people who make millions. It's not what you make; it's what you keep. Yeah, you got to pay yourself first. Okay, eliminate debt. Um, everybody has their own percentage of what they can put away. But if, if even if you just put away twenty five dollars a month, yeah, because we waste that on fast food, right? So if you put something, at least something away. It, you'll start a discipline about your, your habits, okay. if that makes sense. And as far as the stock market, we've averaged 10% over the last century, almost 100 years of, of, of the stock market. So yes, it has even flows, ups and downs, but when the market is down, that's when it's on sale. We don't look at it that way. We look at, oh, we're losing money. Um, but however, just say if you were 60 years old and the market was down, then yes, that is a different different topic that's why you have to be diversified you don't have all your eggs in one basket i don't understand it though sherry i don't i i keep talking to people about the stock market and mm -hmm. people are telling me they're making they're in it for the long haul they're playing the long game for their kids and i keep trying to ask people about the stock market mm -hmm. because i'm still in the mindset of i do a service i sell a product i get paid i hold on to my money or save it or invest it so i can make more money that makes more sense to me. I can explain that to you. Mm -hmm. I can teach it to somebody else. But every time I ask somebody about the stock market, I have this coded conversation where they're like telling me the information, but then they don't want to tell me the information or they're telling me, telling it to me in a way where it's like, I can't really help you. You're not going to really understand it until you start doing it. You know what I mean? And so, and a lot of times they're like, well, I'm not a financial advisor Correct. and I can't really give you financial advice. Um, so I'm saying that to ask you, are you somebody that could professionally give me a financial advice? I am. Yep. I am series six, six, 63 and 26 certified. So license, that means, with, license with FINRA. That means I can do mutual funds, 401ks. I can be a business, um, their benefits person. So life insurance, mutual funds, et cetera. I can do SEP IRAs, you name it, I can do it. Um, so, so you so you won't ever say I'm not a financial advisor because, you know, people be saying that people who be dealing with stocks, they'd be like, this is not a place where you get financial advice. Well, you got to sign a prospectus for me to like actually give you advice. Um, when I take my series 65, that I will be a bona fide financial advisor. So there's certain verbiage in the financial world where we cannot say. 
So the licenses that I told you I have, I am not a financial advisor. That's Series 65. Okay. Okay, that's a, there's different verbiage we have to use. So I can say I'm a financial investment specialist, financial coach, da 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 da, but I cannot say advisor because I have not passed my Series 65 yet. So is that, that something that sense. you're trying to do right now? Oh yeah, it's already downloaded. So okay. whenever, if I'm on my phone, I got a little downtime, I'm studying. So that's a tough thing to do, to find, pass, to get that certification. And that's a big part of the reason why people say, I'm not giving you financial advice. Because um, you can get sued. Because you can get sued. Oh yeah, you can get sued. Before I, you know, I do put that caveat, if I do something on social media, this is not financial advice. However, it's Roth IRA season, you might want to max that baby out for 2023, <laughs> just saying, yeah. you know, because... You have to pay yourself at the end, Uncle Sugar, the government, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. They just, you're gonna pay taxes on taxes on taxes. So you might as well pay yourself and learn the best way to not have to pay a lot of taxes if that so makes not sense. Because you gotta pay yourself. Yes. You gotta be able to live. We don't have to retire when we're 65 plus. Mm -hmm. You can retire at 43. Who says you have to wait that long? Right. You just gotta set. You gotta plan. Plan your life. Yeah. You got to make sacrifices. Is that cruise worth X, Y, Z? Drink patches on a cruise is $1,000. Yeah. Right? What could you have done with that $1,000? I got invited on so many cruises last year, and it's not to be pompous or anything, but I was like, I had a goal, and I have money goals. And that cruise, I've been there, did it. You yeah, know what? Right. Okay. So if there is a service... Uh, well, you said step one is stop spending more than you make, right? Um, and if I was to get service through you, or if I was to hire you, you would look at my bank statements, see how I'm spending my money. If and you wanted me to. Now, sometimes I don't dig all in the weeds like that. I'll give you a financial needs analysis, and I will ask those questions if you're willing to be vulnerable. Because I can't help you if you're not going to be totally honest. I can just get you, okay. You got to be truthful with yourself. Right. People do not want to be truthful with themselves. Yeah. Like they if you have even... an Amazon habit, just let me know you got an Amazon right. habit. It's okay. Yeah. So you can still do it, but we can put, you know, more of it away. We, so what your, your end goal is actually is. Understood. So what do you typically find to be, um, what do you typically find to be a consistent pattern among most of your clients? Um, are we not looking at the money? Are we spending the money in the wrong places? Are we, what, 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 what are we doing? What are you generally seeing us do? No budget. No budget. Just undisciplined. Um, so no budget, undisciplined means I make money, I spend money, that's it. Mm -hmm. I and I know work. I'm gonna pay this bill and that's it. And like, do you know how many years it's gonna take you to pay off that bill? See, we don't know things like that. We just know I'm going to be forever paying this. Okay, if you got $14,000 in debt, do you know how many years it's going to take you to pay that off? So while you're going on cruises, while you're going on, you know, shopping sprees, you could be eliminate some of them years off your debt. Yeah. Because interest keeps accumulating. Keeps accumulating. Yeah, because if some people look at their credit card statements, you'd be like, year-to-date interest, $800. That's $800 you just gave the credit card company because... You didn't pay this bill off. Just because you didn't pay the bill off mm -hmm. on time. Okay. So, uh, what what do you think is the big the reason for this? Like, do you think we're just kind of like on a hamster wheel? We're in a trance. Why aren't we budgeting? Why? Why? why I mean, if and that's it. Is that is that it? Like, is it just, just some people don't see hope. No some light people don't it. see like they have student loan debt. Crazy. Like Hopeless. I've seen people with three hundred thousand dollars. Like they're educators or they're, you know, our doctors and lawyers, they have a lot of debt. Yeah. A lot of debt. So some people don't see, like I said, the light of the tunnel. So. Well, can you speak to our, can you give us some hope real quick? Can you encourage us? Yes. What, 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 <laughs> give us some hope. Sometimes like if, you, if you're not I'm making hope. a lot of money, sometimes you have to earn more money. So monetize your passion. If you cook, you know, be an entrepreneur. You can't, like, if you don't have enough time, you just got to find it. Yeah. There is hope. You got to make time for what's more important. These jobs aren't loyal. These jobs are not loyal. So yeah. a lot of times people are spending more time at these jobs 
and as soon as they get a robot, cancel. You're canceled. Human people don't understand. The human is the first thing to go. That's how we save money. Yeah. So you got to really figure out where you stand financially. Be honest with yourself. Be willing to think outside the box. So if you have a talent, sometimes step on step on faith. Yeah, man, monetize that thing. Monetize it. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't start looking at finances seriously like this until COVID. Yeah. I saw a friend of mine, he had Apple stock. He made $1,600 off it. I only made 14 because I only had one or two of Apple stocks when he actually was doing options trading. Mm. So during COVID, guess what Sherry did? What did he do? Learned options. So then a friend of mine came with, you know, she came with the insurance idea. And I was like, you know what? I did have a nephew pass away. My sister didn't have insurance. So I was like, you know what? I'll look into this. And it's something our communities don't have anyway. So I got licensed with insurance. And then I got the money license um, six months later. So I need to be, if I don't, if I'm not already got money in the stock market and I'm, and, and Understanding that world, I need to be doing that. I would suggest that, yes. I would. Because if it's in the bank, it's not competing with inflation. It's just making the bank's money. And you know when the bank, they're the first ones to get bailed out, not you. So instead of paying the bank to invest your money, just do it yourself. And then you can start off moderate. Every investor is different. You have conservative, conservative moderate, and then aggressive. Second thing to do is to get... Uh, not term life, but whole life insurance. I'm going to disagree with that. No. Now, so every insurance I am, a, I do my, um, the company I'm with, I am a term insurance, um, producer. However, I also have the investment license with it. So, so why not whole life? I'm not going to say not whole life. Whole life just has, cause everybody's circumstance is different. Cause I personally do have a whole life policy, but you sell term. I know. So before I was a disabled veteran, remember I told you I was a young sergeant and I had to get financial help. Okay. So one of my whole life policies I've had since 2002. Okay. Right. And I would tell you with this particular policy, I was like 21, 22. So I only should have been paying maybe about $40 for it. And the rest of that I could have been investing. If that makes sense. Got That's you. a whole nother topic, but I am grateful to have a whole life policy because I'm 100% disabled and I'm not, I'm not able to be, get covered. So that's something I teach young soldiers to get a private insurance before you are disabled. That's a whole nother subject too. It is, it is. But, but the different type of policies, they're subjective, um, but we were to do the numbers, I would tell you whole life, the ones that you can borrow from, yeah, you can, you can probably do better. They're more expensive for a reason. I'll say that. Right, because you, you get way more access to being able to control what happens, um, but it's less money per month to manage a term. Yeah, term company. is cheaper because there's a term. Like yeah. my company does a 35 year term. However, if you're investing with it, you're gonna come out better as if you were to have a whole life policy. That cash value that it accumulates, sometimes they're only up to a 4% accumulation rate. Yeah. So I'll give you an example for mine. I've had it since 2002. The cash value is only worth $17,000, but I've had it for over 20 years. So it didn't even make a thousand dollars per year versus I got a Roth IRA the same time. And it's about 10, 10 times that amount because it's actually compounding with the stock market. Mm. If that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So cash now, value. And then I have to borrow from it. So that $16,000 that I can borrow from may seem like a lot of money to somebody, but no, like I just told you, my Roth IRA is 10 times as that. Now, what if I'm somebody that is disinterested in learning and understanding what the stock market is and what it's doing, but I would rather pay somebody to do it for me? What, what advice would you give to somebody who thinks like that? That's perfect because you're, you're actually, you care about your finances and then you have the no thought like, Hey, I want somebody responsible, you know, to help me out. Yeah. I kind of correlate it with, with a personal trainer, like a fitness trainer. Yeah. You have the people who are already physically fit. I don't need no help on the machines, but I just want to look a little better. Right. You have those type of people. Then you have people who I have, I know nothing about what a dumbbell is. Come help me. So that trainer is going to be there. 100%. <laughs> right. Then you just have people who just want to, um, just white knuckle it. Yeah. Figure it out on their own. Yeah, just figure it out on their own. And that's fine. 
but then sometimes, like I said, you can have those extra cuts and chisels and everything when you have somebody actually showing you, you know, where to. So it's a good out. mindset to have to be self-aware enough to be like, I'm, I'm too, I'm, I'm, I'm too um, out of shape to figure this out on my own. Mm -hmm. um, it would be a long journey. It would be better if I pay someone to help me. Correct. Um, yeah, that's the, I think that's self-aware. That's, that's me. Right. Like I'm so disconnected from that stuff. But not only am I disconnected, I'm disinterested, mm -hmm. like completely disinterested in what the stock market is, what it's doing. And every time I ask somebody about it, it's just like, I don't like, can you tell me why people have a hard time talking about it? Like why? Because they don't know about it. So uh, when I tell people, I'm like, okay, just say, all right, you got on Tim's, right? right. How much do a pair of Tim's cost? A pair of Tim's cost. This, these, they cost me $200. $200, right? So you're comfortable spending $200 on Tim's because you like them. Yeah. Correct. Right? So what if those same Tim's were on sale for 50 bucks? What would you do? I'm buying them. You're going to buy. So when the stock market is down, people are like, oh, no, the stock market is down. When actually it's like, oh, guess what? Them Tim's are on sale right now. Yeah. So that's when... You should. That's when you start that's, buying. That's buy. Now, when the Tims are four hundred dollars, because when you see the stock market, something's went up four hundred bucks, right? Yeah. So that means them Tims are too expensive right now. Don't buy. Don't buy. You can wait. Right. You can wait. However, if you're an investor and you're investing every month, everything is gonna dollar cost average. So yeah, you may be buying shares at four hundred, but then when it goes down. You're actually buying shares at 50 or wherever the market goes down. That makes perfect sense. So communicate that to a person who is a nine to five. I work, I get a paycheck every two weeks mm -hmm. and it's all I've been doing my entire life. And that's how I, that's the extent of how I understand money works. Mm -hmm. I don't even have an investment mindset because I was taught to go to school, get good grades, go to college, get a good job and wait every two weeks to get your paycheck. Help we're not, me. We're not waiting to get paid because even some stocks or mutual funds pay dividends a month. So like I alluded er, uh, earlier, if you have a 60 year old, people in their 60s, they're at distribution age. So that's the age where you should be living off your money. So from 18, actually 16, because a 16 year old can have a, a retirement account. So from 16 to say 65, that's our accumulation period. So that's when you're just stocking all your money up, right? You're putting on, you're doing, you're making your investments yep. and doing all of those so things. So by the time you're in your 60s, you should be liquidating and living off of that. Got you. Not working at Walmart, not working, no, no knock on working at Walmart, but not working because you have to. Right. You're working because you want to, yes. you want to be busy. So that's why it's imperative. Like I said, we can retire early. We don't have to retire at 65. Right, right. So that's important to get on the right plan and be diversified. Yeah. Um, and like I said, if you invest every month, it's all going to dollar cost average out. And that's like I said, the stock market's average 10%. So, so the expectation for a person is when I turn 60, I don't have to play this investment stock game anymore. I can now cash out on all the stock uh, work that I've done for all these years and get a, a large lump sum of money Correct. while I'm still living. Yep. Because the 401ks that people are participating in, which you need to max, not financial advice, but you need to max out. That's the order. So if you have a 401k at your job, max that out if they match it. Once you match, then it's time to invest in something else. Meaning max it out, meaning invest whatever the amount is that they're investing, you invest that. No, so saying if um what you mean if, by max if my out? company if four one k if my company matches me so typically they match at five percent yeah mine so whatever, the last company I worked for was six percent yep so whatever they match you take it because it's free money got you it's free money if so, they match it so, so, so that's take, the first take it whenever it's available while you're still working at the company correct you're saying you can match it yep and then once you leave that company that you will roll it over into an IRA um, depending on you know, what type it could be a four one, excuse me, a um, traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Right. Now, do you realize the conversation that we're having right now um, is usually like people don't understand it and it's a financially illiterate state of mind that, <laughs> you know, that people, most people have. Mm -hmm. um, 
in that, what, because you said you stopped watching TV, right? And I think, you know, we get distracted by basketball, sports, TV. We don't understand that we're headed for old age and we're either going to be healthy enough to continue to work a job or have enough money invested and set aside um, to be able to live a little bit of life and and be on the good foot. Mm-hmm. Um, can you can you break down what financial literacy is and what it means to be financially illiterate? And just speak to your audience and the people that need to see you, the people that need. <laughs> The people that need to come work with you, can you just talk to them real quick about what financial literacy is and what it means to be financially illiterate? Because some people don't understand that they're illiterate when it comes to finance. Can you do that? Yes. That's like I said, it's. I know that's a loaded it, it, question. Yeah, it's just, it just <laughs> starts. The earlier that I can reach people, the better. So, meaning middle school age kids. And I think they're starting to get it more than your parents because they're, I get a lot of interest for kids want to know about money. Um, and then once their kids are interested, parents are kind of feel a little intimidated, like, okay, hold on a minute, yeah. you know? Um, but I think financial literacy, what it means is just to be educated on what the one percenters know. And what I mean the one percenter is the wealthy. We got to close the wealth gap. The wealth gap is either you're broke or you're poor. That's how we're looking right now. Right. The um, retirement age has went up to 70 because people aren't making enough money. People are, people are really struggling right now. So what I would say about financial literacy is know where your money is going. So when you look at your pay stub and you see these taxes, your retirement, know what, know what you're actually putting in there. I talked to so many people about this retirement. Like, what are you, are you matching? And they're looking at me like, what is that? Exactly. You need to go to HR and know exactly what your benefits are because you're thinking you're putting away in your retirement, working somewhere for 30 years and then come to find out you wouldn't put in enough. You wouldn't even put in anything away. You were just working and getting just a check. working and just getting a check. And then a lot of people are like, no, I want my money now and not thinking that life can be long. That's where we're making a mistake. You want all your money now. But what are you doing with it? What do you have to show for it? What did you build? What, what do you have to show for it? Because over our course of our lifetime, we make over a million dollars. Easy. Easy. What, what do you have to show for it? I stopped lending money out too. Because I looked at, okay, that money could have made me money. But I gave it away. I gave it away. I've given so much money away. That's another thing I stopped doing. I used to hear a lot of sob stories. I'm like, okay, you're going to have fun with your money and then want to be responsible with mine. Okay. We got to stop that. Yeah. This is, uh, <laughs> this is what financial literacy is, guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. How many hours did it take you to make $40? I told my baby cousin that because she was going to give an older cousin some money. I said, how long did it take you to work at Wendy's to get that $40? And you just going to give it to him? Oh, no. Because your time can't be, get, it can't can't. be back. You can't get your it time can't. back. So you got to just think about your how do you value money? Right. Some yeah. people don't want to be wealthy. I've been told that. I don't want to be rich. Okay, you don't have to be rich, but got you it. got to, are you going to be able to live? Did you work 30 years? Because they can take Social Security away. Why? Because you didn't work 30 years. Mm. If you, you, you get all this welfare and SNAP benefits, I get it, Section 8. But when you're older, you did not work. You did not put in. So you're not going to, unless you marry somebody who worked 30 plus years, Social Security not going to mess with you. Okay. Are we looking at that? People aren't looking at that. They're just getting free money while they're young. Okay. So that's the first part of the question. That's what financial literacy is. Understanding where your money is going and what you're doing with it, right? But what it means to be financially illiterate. I don't think that people who are financially literate understands what it means. And if you said to someone, hey... I can tell by your lifestyle, your behaviors, your way of thinking that you're financially illiterate. And I I would assume that you would never say that to a potential client. You would use different words. I would. (laughs) But some people you have to like, 
Okay, you got a three hundred dollar weave. You are or that bag. You don't even have twenty dollars to put in that five hundred dollar bag. You got. To, and you to, got and, to put it you, right. And to say it means that you don't even understand the concept of how money works in the world that we live in today. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's always moving. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get in the way of it to receive more of it, then you're letting it go by you. And it's an ever flowing currency, right? So you can have a lot of money, but if you have a bunch of money and you don't know what to do with it, you're going to squander it in some way, somehow it's going to get taken away from you. Yep. Right. And so that's what I understand it means to be financially illiterate, but I'm telling you what I think. Tell me what I'm missing. Just to prove one point about that. So you have some people who get a 401k and they leave a job. So I had a family member leave Walmart after so many years. So her 401k check, Walmart sent her the check. Yeah. $22,000. She's not 59 and a half yet. So this is where the illiterate part. She went and spent that money. So guess what happens? She got taxed. Taxed tremendously because she wasn't 59 and a half. And she, 401k is a retirement product. So 401ks, 403 BCs, 457. So those are your state, you know, your state retirement. Fund. If you're below 59 and a half and you liquidate, you're going to get taxed. So that's what people don't realize. They just see lump sum of money. Oh, it's burning. But now you got taxed. Right. So when somebody gets a lump sum of money, the best thing for you to do is figure out how you can use that money to make you more money. Correct. Because in hindsight, if you just sit there and let it burn slow out of your bank account, whether it be for your bills or whatever it is that you're doing, the tax code is still going to stay the same. Because the federal government knows if you've got $20,000. Oh, yeah. So if you put more than $5,000, they're tracking you. People don't realize that either. 5000 and there's certain reports that get sent up. Um, in your bank. Um, but just say, for example, if you get a lump sum, you win the lottery. Um, people are like, I'm 42. What I would do if I hit the lottery, you get an annuity. They have those options anyway when you, you know, win the lottery. Right. Annuity and a short term non retirement account. So I can liquidate before 59 and a half. You know, annu annuities, like I don't need the monthly currency every month. So you can do a deferred annuity. Yeah. So that's like later in life. I'll pull money from this uh, annuity when I'm, you know, 50, you know, so there's several options, you know, but yeah. people don't, people don't, you study just can't money. get $200,000 yeah. and let it sit in the bank. That's what I you mean, cannot we, do. <laughs> and the system is, is so uh, comforting, right? It's comforting to know that I can put forth effort doing a specific thing maybe producing a service or producing a product and be paid and it, you can compete in the marketplace and you can be paid. But then, like you said, the 1% know other things that help you get to generational wealth. But so many of us missed that boat. And I think there, the conversation about the requirement for a bulk of society to be ignorant helps the 1% stay wealthy. And I think that's the answer to my question that I asked you earlier is, um, no one wants to really tell you about these things because they don't really know mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure it out. And so the information that you might get from somebody about the stock market sounds coded because they're getting it and learning it mm -hmm. in a coded way. Because we want this to be as confusing as it possibly can be so that not everybody can understand it. Because if everybody's in the stock market and investing all their money and everybody's wealthy, well, then there's no room for somebody to be poor. Correct. And that's my assumption. I'm not giving you financial advice. All right. I'm just, this is what... But we have trust issues in our community, too. I ain't putting my money like people rather have shoebox money or keep it in the, a safe. You know, we we're. You know, you know, I'm telling the truth. Like people, right. people keep us safe because they just have a better trust. You know, they rather, 
you know, trust their, you know, it's, it's here in the it's comfort here. of my own. And, and I got a gun and I can it's shoot just, you it's if you just, come try it's to just come trust take issues, it. yes. Yeah. Versus when that money could be making, you know, right. c- compounding interest so over. So when we start talking, when we start talking about the gold standard and, um, you know, the value of actual paper money um, and how it's significantly decreased in value, mm-hmm. um, how you know the money of the United States has become the world's federal you know reserve currency but now we got some geopolitical activity going on and the gang is ganging Mm -hmm. right now um and so me having money in my shoebox probably won't mean a hill of beans soon what's your take on bitcoin and digital currency and just what advice would you give your potential clients out there Mm -hmm about how they should be thinking about this stuff. Well, Bitcoin, um, there was a rise in Bitcoin um, because, you know, the SEC is looking at it to make it legal. Right, so which, they can control it. Which we do have um, Bitcoin ETFs now. So ETFs are electric traded funds. Yeah. So meaning that you can buy them on your Robin Hoods or any brokerage. You're right, there was so a that's boom. What, that's what that means. I know at some point, maybe five years ago, mm-hmm. there were people like, hey, look, Bitcoin is the next big thing. You need to go ahead and sign up with me and buy this stuff right now while it's cheap because what's going to happen is it's going to be too expensive for you to get it at some point. You got to get it now. It's already too. Bitcoin started off like 11 cents. Bitcoin is over $50,000. So you don't even own like you see how it just went crazy. Um, So when you're buying Bitcoin now, you're only buying a fraction of it. Anyway, unless you're paying $51,000 for one Bitcoin. Unless you were up on it early. Correct. If you were in it when it was 11 cents. You up right now. Oh, you're way up. Way up. Um, that's just like with anybody who, if they would have invested in Apple when it first came out, you know. Um, that's why it's just, the best thing to do is, if, if you're going to invest in individual stocks, do your research on the company. All right? That's, that's the, ner- learn the history of it. However, you want to look at mutual funds because mutual funds are a group of stocks together. So just say, for example, if you have Apple, Facebook, Meta, NVIDIA all in one stock, if Apple has a bad day, the rest of those companies, you know, yeah. are keeping it above. Right. So, above so when you're talking, work. yeah, when you're talking investing, it's just like I said, if you just stay consistent, um, it all averages out. Yeah. Okay. It all averages out. Like so, you're going to do better than... When people look at their bank statement and you see that zero zero point two those two pennies, that's because the money, whatever you have in there, the bank and made money off you and they're giving you their dividend. Okay. So so people see that. Real quick, free coaching, okay. Um I'm a small business owner. Mm-hmm. Um I'm making I'm doing all I'm doing okay. Uh, it's a good supplement, you know, income from my outside of my regular employment. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I, if I probably didn't spend more time doing this, I could probably make it my main thing. Um, but I'm trying to figure out, as because I'm a music artist as well, mm-hmm. and I make some money from music. I do make some money from doing content, photography, and film. So I got some multiple streams of income coming in. Not anything big, right? But just enough to be enjoying what I'm doing and, mm-hmm. and making some money. What advice do you have for small business owners who are starting out, you know, on a small end, haven't really, uh, you know, made any any steps towards investing? They just out here working and making money. What advice would you give small business owners and artists out here that's uh, you know trying to do what they do right by their money? Gotta pay yourself first. So you have um, SEP IRAs, so those are um, individual retirements for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Um, But we know as entrepreneurs, we spent, if you're really investing in your your business, you're spending spending a lot of money too. So you got to find a balance. Like I know it's hard to put something away, but you got to put something away. Establish some type of account where you know it's getting funded, even if it's 5%, 2%, something. You know, Um, you need an emergency account. That's for everybody, whether you're a small business person or um, entrepreneur, everyone needs at least six months income emergency. Right. So, so, emergency. so basically do all of the things, pay the bills, invest in the business, uh, uh, do all the things, go to the grocery store, buy your gas, 
but you need to make sure you put some kind of money aside away from the gambit and the matrix yep. of the financial world. Yep. Because if you're not, if you're just letting everything rotate, then you're just going to be sitting here while everything is rotating yep. and you're going to be feeding. Never get ahead. And never get ahead. Because like I said, during COVID, I was fortunate. Like I said, I had just retired, yeah. just retired from the army and we got shut down and I wasn't working. Wasn't working. The VA wasn't paying me my money on time, but I had a little honey pot. So you've got to be recession proof. Yeah, man. And that means if you need to cut back on, you know, getting your, you know, speaking from a woman's standpoint, like pedicures, manicures, I get them, but I don't get them every, every month like every I used month. to. Like, I'm yeah. like, all right, you, okay, you can pull you back get, on you something. Back a little yeah, you got to pull back on something. Um, and that you're, every, every person in the household should have an investment account, too, if you're able. Like I said, if it, whether it's just you putting $25 away a month, the baby needs an investment account. Save up for that college. Save up for that prom, you know. For, for So for a kid to get out of high school and go out into the world with $20,000. Come on. Is, it's it's, it's going to help. We got to stop starting from the basement. Um, my nephew, he has he's, um, has intellectual superpowers, we'll say, right? Um, first thing they told me at Social Security is that um, I was like, oh, I'm going to start putting this, some of this away. No, you can't put more than two thousand dollars in an account, and I'm like, I don't know. I just passed my uh, my series sixty three, and he can have an able account. Yeah. If they have a disability prior to age twenty six, they can have an investment account as long as it's not over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. See, that's what they don't tell you. They want to keep. No, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah, got to educate. You know, Man. because they need help after you know when they're you know older. They're older than adults. You know. Yeah. So so before we get out of here, um, I don't want to keep you. Um, this is fun. <laughs> we like we, we we like you. You know, yeah. uh, you've educated us. You seem to know exactly what it is that you're talking about. Um, what can we do right now? And I mean, me and the audience, people who are watching. What we can what can we do to help you and help ourselves? What do you want us to do? Just, just tell, <laughs> tell us what you want. What you take our money. What, what, tell us like, what I would love to set up a workshop. I would love to come to your your um, your place of worship. Um, invite me to your home. We can do this on Zoom. I'm licensed in ten different states. Um, Talk to them. They right there. Yes. Tell them. <laughs> if you do not have life insurance, investments, any of that, I would love to come educate you. Um, I do financial needs analysis first, no transactions, because I want you to be fully educated and know where you financially stand. Um, you got to know where you are before you know where you're going. Okay. Um, how, how much is this? What it costs? Is it depending on the person in that situation, or you know, can we get a discount? What What do we get? Hey, there's no. It, it's your financial freedom. <laughs> so it ain't no discounts <laughs> to financial discount. freedom. So okay. I tell people, um, if you did twenty five dollars a month, right, and you did that for a year. That's three hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So it's three hundred dollars gonna get you financially free. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 well, I mean, three hundred I'm dollars a year. Excuse me. Oh, is that year. gonna get you financially no, free? No, no, it's not. Or three thousand a year. Uh, you know, you know Whatever, what I'm saying. Whatever you so, gotta think about it in terms of what you want. Yeah. What's right. gonna be when you're? When do you want to retire? So part of my financial needs analysis is like, when do you want to retire? You give me your age. And I'll give you uh, what we call a FIN number, financial independence number. People say and you'll a million calculate, dollars. Right. Yeah. You'll calculate how much money I'm going to need to invest now so that when I get to that age, Correct. I can actually do what I said Correct. I was going to do. So if you tell me, how young are you? I'm 37. 37. You can say, you know what? I want to be done with this by 49. Before my 50th birthday, I want to be done. What I would do, all right? How much do you have in a 401k? How much do you have just... How much do you have? Complete autopsy of your finances. And then we'll give you a FIN number. And then that's how you you invest. That's so how the, you backwards so plan. That, so that'll be right. So I'm, you're going to reverse engineer what my life is going to look yep. like and what it's going to be. Because you're going to tell me what you want. It's depending on your lifestyle. You want to be eating cat food later? You want to be eating steak lobsters, flying wherever? What is your lifestyle? What do you want? To, what you know? Yeah. So if you want to be done by 49... Then I, we devise a plan together to get you financially independent by 49. So that means, okay, you need a deferred annuity. Set you up a deferred annuity. If we need to just set up education accounts for your son, so forth, tr- wills and trusts, the whole shebang is done. I'm a, one, I'm a one-stop shop. 
Okay. Um, thank you so much for that. How do we contact you? Where do we follow you? I'm the money lady on TikTok, Sherry Roundtree on IG. Mm -hmm. That's my government name. And then uh, number is area code 916-475-6042. Got you. And I appreciate it. No doubt. One, one more thing before you go. I know you have, like in my industry, there's a lot of people that's doing what I do mm -hmm. that makes it hard for me. You know, and I come to people and they have been taken advantage of mm -hmm. and all type of stuff. What What do you think uh, set makes you different from other people that do what you do? Um, what, what do you think sets you apart, makes you, makes you different? I'm fully transparent. Like I said, you can follow me on my social media. I document my mornings. I'm zero five playing hoops. Um, I'm with my mom, my nephew. I'm an open book. Um, you can look me up on broker check, um, validity. Um, and like I said, I'm an open book. You, I told you I have a whole life policy. They're, they are a, um, the competition. Um, part of my presentation, I actually show my policy and I show the why it's a sucky policy, but yet grateful to have one, you know? But I know once I'm financially independent, I'm surrendering that bad boy because I'm overpaying for it. Mm. It doesn't financially make sense, but I need it just in case something happens to me. She's transparent. Family. So transparent. Come on. She's transparent. Miss Roundtree. I appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. Thank you. Peace and grace to everybody checking in on Instagram, yeah. Facebook, and YouTube. If you have any questions or any uh, thing that you need dealing with financial literacy, I believe this is a an authority and somebody that you can reach out to. Um, and thank you so much for being here. To everybody that's uh, t tapping in on every other every platform, my name is Darius Dior. I'm a content creator. I'm a filmmaker and a photographer. If you need content created, Thinking Kingdom is the place for you to come. Why? Because we're just that good. All right, and <laughs> better than everybody else. Uh, but if any anything, we we care about what your goal is and what your strategy is and what it is that you want to do. And so, if you need help with getting your content created, we are here for your content creation needs. It's Darius Dior again. Peace and grace.